Hello, everyone. This is Brenda, your host for Your Life Matters. It is so awesome to be here today. I just enjoy being here, sharing the gospel with you. You know, there were times where I sometimes have to remind ourselves and even myself here that the reason for Your Life Matters with God is to take worldview issues align them with the word of God, all right? It gives you the opportunity to say, you know, let me think about the action before I take it. Let me think about the thought that just stirred up in my mind and go, does that align with the word of God? The reason being is, is that you want to make sure that you keep yourself in tune with God's word, in tune with the Holy Spirit, so that the Lord can use you, all right, for his plan that he has already have for you to do. There's souls that needs to be saved. The harvest is full, but for us to be effective in the Lord's ministry is to be able to humble ourselves, be in the word, kick our own wisdom to the curve and say, Lord, I'm going to take your will and wisdom to govern my life so that you can use me to reach that soul. That's what it's all about, my folks, because God loved every creation that is walking on this planet. Granted, we don't accept and like all those things, all right, that some choices we made. Even myself, I made choices that was contrary to the word of God. I even turned my back on the word of God. But you know what's so beautiful about God's love? He still knocks on the doors of our heart. He still goes out there as the shepherd and says, I'm here to bring you back home. Follow me. Follow me. All right. And come back. Don't let the world try to define what your life is. Don't let the world define what good and bad is of you. It's already written here in the word of God. And the Lord is saying to us, no matter what you've done in life, I'm going to love you anyway. He says, my love will cover a whole multitude of sin, whole multitude. You don't have to worry about that stuff. I want you to surrender it so that my love can cover it. Surrender it so that you can never tap into it again. Because the Lord says, when I do that, when I forgive you of your sins, all right, I'm not going to remember it no more. It is far as the east is to the west. See, that means it's so broad, it's, it's, it's just so far away from you that you cannot even grasp it again. But we know sometimes there's people who try because they don't believe that God has forgiven them. They don't believe the love that God has poured forth in them. And they think that they're so dirty that they're not valued or worth saving. But see, God believe you're worth saving no matter how dirty you think you are. Because he does not want you to go to hell. He doesn't. Never did. Never did. The word of God says that he is slow to anger. And you're like, well, how is that possible if he punishes? Well, let, let's look at our life. I'm going to look at mine. I made mistakes. I am now telling my story here. 60 years old. All right. 40 years of it I wasted turning my back on the Lord, doing what I wanted, even thinking suicide, you know, you know, those things there. And, and, you know, cause I didn't think I was worthy. I was talking myself out of not being in God's love and see, God doesn't work that way. And I had to grasp onto that truth. And let me tell you, it took a while. So I'm not saying it's easy once you grasp onto the truth that all of a sudden it's going to be just suns and, you know, sun shining and roses and everything. No, no, there's a process that takes place. And that process, sometimes you get a little tired. Sometimes you just don't want to deal with it. But you know what? If we be like Paul and says that we need to buffet our body, we need to exercise our faith. We need to keep on this race. Then the Lord starts purging all that crap that either we brought in or somebody else inflicted it on us and whatever. All that gets purged away. And that new creation in Christ starts to just rise up within us. And then you, you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. You can tell the stuff, I, I don't got time for you. That's gone. God, God took care of that. You don't exist in my life anymore. Yeah, I remember that. But let me tell you how God changed my life. And I'm going to give him the glory because of how he changed that from my life. See, the thing is, is that we forget that we need to praise God for where he brought us out from. 
not be self-righteous in it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, from there, that we need to learn how to mind our own business when it comes to the faith walk journey and look at our own self. The reason why I, I, I stress that, that, you know, there are a couple of people on Facebook and, you know, they, they you know, we, we got a lot of people that they have their own interpretation of what a Christian looks like, or they have their own interpretation of what a pastor should look like, you know, and how they should, should be on platform or how the message should be spoken and so forth. And it's like, you know what, people, we need to get off the self-righteous bandwagon. It took my, me a while to do that because, see, you know, years ago I, I came from hardcore Pentecostal church, East Coast, Boston. Hardcore. You know, you had to wear a hat, couldn't wear pants. You know, skirts and dresses were the only thing, dressing modestly, you know, uh, and, and so forth. And um, if, 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 if you messed up, well, then you're not in the Lord anymore. If, if you weren't speaking in tongues and you didn't really get baptized, I mean, it was just a whole bunch of madness. And then since I've been here... In Washington State, you know, th this, this church has brought me out of darkness in regards to the teaching that God has given them to help purge the old Egypt out of me to know how to now live in love. And, and living in love is still a practice for me, all right, because I was raised kind of hardcore, verbal abuse and so forth. But you know what? The journey is awesome. It's not tedious anymore in my life. Now I look at the journey as the most awesome thing ever. So at this church here, which is experiencechurch.tv, it was, it's just so awesome. So awesome because our core mission is to help people win. Our core mission is to teach people that no matter how many times you fall down, we're going to help you get back up. That's, that's what we're all about. We don't have time to invest in the judgment because hell is too close. Heaven is right by and we can't have the enemy have its victory. So we don't have time for this judgment. Here at Experience Church, we invest time into raising you up, encouraging you, helping you to live and helping you to be in the word, understand the word, showing you how to, to pray and use the scriptures to speak into your situation. All these things that weren't taught to me in a Pentecostal church that I grew up and raised in. So it's so important to understand that God is not investing time in judgment. If that was the case, none of us will exist after Noah. None of us. He wouldn't even waste his time creating. He'd just say, you know what? I'm done with people. I'm not going to worry about it. But see, God didn't do that. He did it all over again and all over again and all over again. Forgiveness, grace, and mercy. Forgiveness grace and mercy, forgiveness, grace and mercy. He's been doing it over and over and over and over and over again. Now, the last step was Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus came down not for himself, you know, and it resonated in me in the word of God when I, I'm reading it over again. And Jesus repeating it, I am doing my father's work. See, people of, of different religions and so forth, they say, well, it was, you know, it, you, you're following Jesus because Jesus is the God and, and, and it, it's because of Jesus, it's because of Jesus. There's some things that's because of Jesus. Yes, this is the because of Jesus. Because of his obedience to the Father, not to himself, that he did these things. Could you imagine being like Jesus, born a man on this planet, knowing full well that by the certain age you're going to die for these people who keep turning their back on the Father? Could you imagine that? That's the definition of love that people are still not trying to grasp. See, they look at love in the secular world, you know, making me doing that kumbaya, feeling, huggies, all that stuff. And that's not the love that God is talking about. See, the true love, that love that's so clean and pure is God, because God is love. And for receiving God, that love spurs up in us. To receive God is to receive the love of the sacrifice that he did 
giving his son to take our punishment. The word of God, it just, it just, I mean, this month has just been something when I'm in the word of God and it just came out and said, you know, that Jesus took our punishment. He took God's wrath that was supposed to be on us because we keep failing to not obey the word of God. We keep rejecting God. We keep rejecting his teachings. And he took Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, as he said, he is the last sacrificial lamb. And took and and he just got beat down. Spit on, slapped on, slandered, cursed from his own people, put on the tree, nailed. Praise God. (coughs) Praise God for that great love that he was still trying to save us. He wasn't trying to save Jesus. He was trying to save us from ourselves and the pit of hell. So when Jesus died, his blood covered a whole multitude. of His blood washed us white as snow, washed us from the dirt of sin from this world. And see, when he died, he didn't die for believers. See, it's not the believers' sin that was taken away. It was the populace, all the living people on this earth. Your sins have been taken away. Now it is a gift. Salvation is such an awesome gift to have. So I'm encouraging you, even if you make mistakes, you got to understand Jesus died for all of your sins, each and every one of you. He didn't say he died for believers. He died for the whole people on this earth. So now God is saying, this is now the most precious gift I'm giving you. Will you receive it? Will you receive Jesus Christ so that the gift of heaven is yours? Eternal life is yours. Freedom from sickness, illness, and disease is yours. Reconciling of marriage and healing is yours. Protecting your children is yours. <coughs> That's what this is all about. So when I say that we need to mind our own business and focus on our own faith, I'm telling you folks, we need to do that. We need to do that. Because when we're so busy, all right, focusing on the other people and how they live for Christ, we're missing the blessings that God has for us. So let me tell you, there, there was, a, uh, like I said, a gentleman on Facebook, and they were posting, and they were talking about Joel Osteen, and, you know, and they talk about all these little, all the other uh, 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 TV uh, preachers and so forth, especially those who are of big wealth and so forth. And the, the one thing that always grasps them is the wealth. The wealth just blasts. It just boggles their mind. And I don't know why, because all of us can receive and obtain that same wealth. Because God says that, you know, when we, all right, read and meditate on the word and not deter from it left or right, that the, the, the Lord said we will prosper and gain all that we can from this land. Prosperity has always been of the Lord. Now, the purpose of prosperity is not just a self-satisfaction. Um, 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 the, it's, it's supposed to be used to invest into the ministry of God to help us to do the work that he has called us to do. The other thing is, as he explained in his word, because he never told the people not to be rich, but he advised them to use their riches wisely to help others and to invest in the ministry of God. See, the, 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 this is the thing, which is, which is so silly. that pe- I, stick, I still think people don't really pay attention to. You cannot have a church building without tithes. You just can't. You can't have anything without any type of monetary investment because you need something to feed into it to establish its foundation so that you can use it and to grow. So you can't have a facility and not be able to pay electricity and heat. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't even have your house if you're you're not able to pay the mortgage, the heat, the taxes. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
there's a monetary value that has to exist for the other half of the things that we use to exist. It's the same thing with socialism. People say, well, socialism, it, 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 it was in the Bible. All right. So, you know, socialism is, 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 is in the Bible. We're, we're supposed to do that. Folks, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me hit this real, real quick. Yes, socialism, if you want to call it that, is in the barrel. But the thing is, I'm calling it charity, not socialism. See, see, this is the, 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 the problem. We take words and then we water it down to the point where it doesn't have its true definition anymore. See, the Lord spoke about charity, not socialism. See, charity is different from socialism. Charity is when a person who has a wealth or who has some resources or who has whatever is able to go and give and invest into the person to help them, to help them, not support them. See, there's a difference. Because, see, the Lord doesn't contradict his words. See, this is why he says in Proverbs, you know what I mean? Idle hands lead to poverty. Idle hands. I mean, I mean that means you're sitting there doing nothing. Leads to poverty. So there has to be some type of work ethic involved for you to have a quality of life. And it's not through socialism. That's why the Bible, it may look like socialism to you, but in full extent, it's charity. Because, see, there's a loving exercise, a loving action step that goes into this. Socialism doesn't have a loving action step into it. See, socialism is a particular lifestyle all right, that the individual wants to be in so that they can still sustain whatever life they want of the cost of the other person. Charity does not do that. So this is the same thing in regards to some of these pastors on the TV and so forth. All right, granted, you know, they're doing wonderful, but see, we, we don't go beyond what they've invested these incomes into. You know, with the Joyce Manners, Kenneth Copeland, all these guys, they have crippled, they invested money into world needs of charity. Food, clothing, medicine, all of this all around the world to help those who cannot help themselves. See, we, we don't look beyond that. We just look to see what the pastors are doing. And we need to get off that pot. All right, because see, you know, Brenda's looking at being on that financial growth herself. That's where I'm at because that's what the Lord promised me. I'm going to take it. That's where it's at. The reason being is those who refuse to work are jealous or angry or whatever the case may be, and they don't want you to be in that same position. So they rather slander you or keep you down so that makes you mentally complying to their ignorance and then you're not going further. Let me tell you something. Stop it. Stop it right now because it is not of God. It of his enemy because Satan knows if you succeed, you grow and you're financially prospering to invest into God's ministry, he loses. That's it. Satan loses. All right. So we, we need to make up our mind. Focus on your own faith. Ask the Lord, how is he going to use you so that you can grow and prosper to sow into his ministry? <clears throat> At the end of all of this, it's about how many souls were affected by it that would lead them to Jesus so that they have the opportunity to gain the most precious gift in the world, heaven and eternal life. That's what you got to get into your head. That's where it needs to be. All right, we, we need to quit. So when I, when I responded to my guys out there and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, some people we got to be careful of, you know. You know, we got to be careful of the message because we want to make sure they're not false teaching and so forth. <clears throat> I said, I understand that. That's no problem. But you got to remember this too. The pendulum swings both ways. 
because we got those hardcore religious individuals legalizing religion that does the same thing and make their people fall. So this is the deal. Like I explained to them. All right, we need to focus on our own faith and get off, stop judging people and how they are serving the Lord. The Lord said that we need to pray for them, encourage them, lift them up. Now, if they are intentionally, that's the word, intentionally refusing to follow the Lord, then we need to separate ourselves from them. We don't stop praying for them because their soul is still important. We still pray. Asking the Lord to please send a labor out there that's going to touch their hearts, nurture them, help them to lead them back to salvation. That's the purpose of the shepherd is to go out there and find that one sheep and bring them back to the fold. Not sit down there and go, you know what? The way he's teaching it is not right. It, it, he's, he's a false teacher. The word of God doesn't say any of that. See, the, the thing is, we're using our own personal interpretation and we're not asking the Holy Spirit to reveal the things that we need to know to make sure that it's aligned by truth. See, that's the thing. Because we always got to have this, it's got to be done in a certain way. The Lord said we need to do things in decency and order, but the Lord didn't go, here is the format, here is the template. You cannot leave the template, all right? Or the things are not going to work out right. Let me explain something to you. When Jesus was bringing people in as disciples, many disciples were coming in, many disciples. And so in Hebrew, the disciples meant that they were being trained up. They were being trained up to speak the word of God through the different cows, through the different countries and sharing the word of God to these people. Now, there was a group of people who were teaching the word of God. And, you know, Jesus' first set of disciples, they were pissed off. Hey, Lord, they're not doing it the way that you told us to do it. They're not doing it the way that we are taught through you how to do this. That They're wrong. And that's what my guys are trying to explain to me. But, you know, the Kenneth Copeland's Joel, they're wrong. They're wrong. Jesus says, now, look, wait a minute, let's look at this, okay? As long as they are teaching my word... I mean, sincerely and honestly teaching my word. And people are accepting me. See, not them accepting Jesus Christ. Then they're doing an awesome work. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. And this is what we need to do ourselves. We need to stop being God's judge of who's considered pastors or no good pastors. Saints of God are not. Our responsibility is to be an example of Christ. Our example, uh, uh, responsibility is to always be in forgiveness, letting go of offenses. And let me tell you, with Brenda, that's like 24-7 because I know me. I'm honest to let you know. I know me. All right? But we also have to love that genuine love. That genuine love, we have to have that. See, that's why in 1 Corinthians 13, it says that, you know what, if we're doing all these things and we don't have love in it, it means nothing. It's just loud noise. It's a Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah noise. That's what that is. But when we come and do what the Lord says do with this character trait, and the Lord says, you will know my people by their fruits. Let me show you what these fruits are. We're going to go to Galatians 5. All right, verse 22, and it says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, or in other words, self-control. i got to raise my hand because I'm always working on that one. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. None. 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 See, these are the traits that makes us attractive to those who are trying to seek to get out of darkness. 
It's the same thing. We're in the house and, you know, we're getting up in the morning trying to get ready for work or whatever we're doing. And, you know, we're brushing our teeth and make ourselves look pretty. And I'm not much of a diva, so I don't put much makeup on or anything like that. But I know I have to get out of the house looking decent. Okay. But, but it's the same, same principle. Same principle. Are we adorned with the fruit of the Spirit that we are so attracted that our light for the Lord is shining that people are saying, I need to go to her. I need to go to him. There's something special and different about them. I want to have what they have. Are you working on your faith so that you're attracted to those who are trying to escape out of darkness? Is your language in such a way that, Lord, the word of God, all right, is attractive. It's good to the taste because we're supposed to be like salt, tasteful, so that they want more of the word of God. This is where it's at. This, this has touched my heart today. And, I, you know, and I was <clears throat> figuring out, you know, what to say. And there were some other issues going out there. But this kind of bothered me a little bit because it's like, okay, folks, when are we going to give up the judgment mode? And learn to support each other. When are we going to give up going, well, that person's always angry and I don't know why she's having things about there. Instead of looking at her outside appearance or their outside appearance, why don't you approach them and go, look, something must be wrong. How can I pray for you? Because we don't have to be involved in their business. We just need to be available to be in a support mechanism in their life. Now, there are some people in the church that do put on a facade, all right? Don't get me wrong, all right? And, but they're doing the enemy's business. Those are our Christian tro Trojan horses. So, yes, we have to be careful of who we connect with. And how do we do that? By staying in the word of God. And the Lord will bring people in as a warning to you to help you to know whom to connect with, whom that we should be with, all right, to help us stay true to the calling of God. Because there is, there's some people in the church that like Trojan horses. Believe me, not everybody is holy. Not everybody is righteous. You know, every, we're, as long as we're in this, this is why Jesus says that our, our um, faith is like filthy rags. That's why he said that. Because, Sometimes we just do some dumb stuff because we let self be in the way. We let pride get in the way. We let all those things get in the way, all right, so that it prevents us from being Christ-like. It prevents us to have on that holiness that we should. But let me, let me explain to you something. I'm trying to find this for you because I, I was reading this, and it touched my heart. Um, 1 Corinthians 19, 18. And it's so awesome because sometimes we think we're by ourselves. Some things we don't know who to trust because I have a young lady and I love her so dearly. And she touched my heart when she says, you know, Miss Molesky, I, I want to come back to the come back to the church, but I don't know how people will look at me because of my past. I don't, I'm like, don't worry about that. Don't worry. Lord has already blessed the people who's going to connect with you to make you feel loved and needed and welcome. So those who do not understand that, kick them to the curb. Because God has those people who is waiting to receive you in love. And let me prove this to you. And, and this touched my heart so much. In 1 Corinthians 19, 18, and this is when Elijah was running away because Jezebel killed all the prophets and Elijah was the only one left. And so he was in a cave, didn't know what to do, and the angel of God came to him, and they were spoken to him. But the, the one thing was awesome about this, because Elijah was like, what do I do? There's nobody else to go. But the Lord said, look, wait a minute, hold on. Let me, let me show you something. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Are you catching that? See, when you see people go astray, when you see saints of God goes astray, don't think that it's, it's, it's decimated, there's nothing left. God always has a reserve of people who are out there true to the word of God who will come to the rescue and help us to grow in our faith. So I'm also sharing this to those who think that they are alone because of the mistakes that they made and, and they're weak in the faith. Don't be there. Be where God wants you to be, just where Elijah is at. God has thousands of people out there 
just for you to help you grow in the faith. So start thanking the Lord for whom he has blessed to be in your life, to help you to grow and to know that he has your back. If you're out there and you are looking to have that same support, if you're looking to have that same person help you to grow in your faith, or if you're looking to want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior, that you can also live the life of victory through him and have heaven as your home, eternal life promised to you, then let's take a pause right now and let's speak to the Lord. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I accept your son Jesus as my personal savior. I turn away from what I once was, and I want to receive the will of God to govern my life. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. I receive it in Jesus' name that will give me revelation. Take my life and use it for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and said this prayer, then Lord, step out and find a place that's going to help you to grow. And if you can't find that place, look, experiencechurch.tv may be that place for you. We are open 930 and 11 here at South Hill, Puyallup. And if you're online, we're there 930 and 11 Pacific Standard Time. Come, experiencechurch.tv. We help people to win in their life for Christ. This has been an awesome time with you. I thank you so much for letting me share the word with you. Your life matters with God. With your host here, Brenda. Until next time.